Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, what about WebGL? What do you think about it? its use case today and its use case in the future? So let's get into it. Well, WebGL or well, which most popular is, so it popular is associated with the canvas element is today a well, if you, do, if you haven't heard about it, that, that's not all that unusual because it's actually not a very common thing for even front-end developers to use it. Let me explain. So, for the most part, your needs for animation and doing some form of transformation or something of this nature, basically on a UI of some sort, is a fairly simple task with just using plain old CSS. However, what the canvas element allows you to do is basically to draw out whatever it is that you need onto the canvas. And using WebGL, which is the underlying actual language or like the interfaces that allows you to to do this, I, it's uh, it empowers you to do quite a few more, uh, quite a lot of it. It's a very big interface with a lot of possibilities, but it's not that used because commonly the, the use case you have for it on the web is fairly simple. And most of the needs of web developers are met by just plain old CSS. There are exceptions to this, and I will touch on that as well. The ex biggest exception to this is if you are making something like a, a, a very simple example would be there are a few sites that have this ability where you can draw on the screen, as an example. You can use your mouse, you can drag and click and drag and drop and all that good stuff, and you can draw shapes. That would be a very u useful case for, say, the can for the canvas element and WebGL by extension, because it allows you to, well, draw out something on the element in question, right? But as you can imagine, that's not all that practical for everyday use cases. So if we talk about a more realistic use case for WebGL, I will say that the most abstract thing I can say is that if you want to make an animation of some sort or something that moves on the screen that you cannot accommodate something more advanced than what you can accommodate with transitions and things of, and regular CSS animations, then WebGL and the canvas element and so forth is a very good option to do that. Although it's very rare that you need to do this. The most like the today the most co common use case i can see for it would be for browser games uh, more advanced browser games you know that uh, maybe you know that back in the day we used uh, and some games actually still use flash we used to use flash for this sort of animation a few years back but today using webgl would be a uh, at least in my opinion a better option that's just how i feel about it but if we're going to talk about that and then also touch on what the future use case for WebGL is going to be, um, I don't th see that changing all that much. Although the interface is there and the element, like, I mean, it's been supported for quite a while. And there are actually nice, like, e even though like the absolute vanilla interfaces in just plain old JavaScript is a little bit, at least in my opinion, it's a little bit clunky. There are absolute. Like, I mean, there are JavaScript libraries that are on that you can put on top of this and make some fairly cool and powerful. Well, powerful is a strong word, but it's a word depending on how you, what you mean. But you can at very at the very least do quite a lot of stuff with WebGL with a few libraries. Um, I don't see this becoming something like that is critical knowledge. As I said, it's a bit of a corner case today to have to use it. Um, at, I mean, I know people who have never had to use it in production code. I've never had to use it in production code. There's never been a really strong, good use case. As I said, it's really only in very specific cases where I see it being useful. And to add on top of that, I don't think that WebGL is going to become this de facto thing that everybody needs to know about. It's probably going to stay one of these specific use case things that we don't really use all that much. 
at least not unless we have that specific use case where it makes a lot of sense. Because I really, th uh, my personal opinion is that I think that WebAssembly will have, well, it's going to offer a better solution to the problem that WebGL is trying to solve as well. And my guess is that that leaves WebGL in, WebGL in kind of the position where, all right, so if I need to do something more advanced than what I can do with just plain old CSS animations and stuff like that, and I don't want to go all the way to using WebAssembly, then maybe WebGL will be, or and the canvas will be a good option. But apart from that, I don't see it moving anywhere else. So what I want you to take away from this is that WebGL is simply an interface for you to draw things out on the canvas element, which allows you to make some fairly powerful 3D, uh, well, not necessarily 3D, but some powerful graphics, if you will. And you can animate things and do all kinds of nice stuff, right? However, it's not that common to have a use case for it in production code. And although it, there is a use case for it, I don't see that growing into something more popular than it is today, especially when we consider that WebAssembly is becoming more and more popular and will, in many ways, will probably be able to do all the things that you want to do with, the, with WebGL and most likely more. So have a great day.